Welcome to this next lesson and this one's all about the Llama layer node and I'm going to show you the basics of it and then as we go through it I'm going to show you a whole bunch of other uses and how you would use it to create a whole variety of materials as well. So I've jumped ahead and I've already created a Llama surface and I've also created a Llama layer and what we're going to do is we're going to make a very simple plastic material. Now in Maya there are two different ways that you can connect a node in. The first is that you can simply press the tab key and then type defuse and then you can select the Llama defuse. Or the other way you can do it is from here if you right click on base we can then select Llama defuse. And what this will do is it will create the Llama defuse node and it will automatically plug it into the material base. And so at the minute we have this Llama defuse which we're going to assign a purple color and I've already found the preset. Now a plastic would have a dielectric coat over the top so let's add that. So coming back to the Llama layer here if I right click and I go material top and I choose Llama dielectric it'll automatically plug it in for us. And so very quickly and straightforwardly you can see that our defuse color is now purple and then over the top, our second layer is this Llama dielectric, which is creating this coating over the top of our defuse node. So let's have a look at the Llama layer itself. Now, there's a number of options here. The first one here you have is top mix. And if I just take this back to zero, what you can see is that actually the top layer, which is the dielectric, now starts to disappear. And again, you can increase this back up to one and then our coating reappears. So next up here we have top thickness and this basically controls how thick your top layer is and at the minute this is this dielectric and I'm not really going to demonstrate it yet in this plastic material. I'm going to show you on our wood lacquer material which we'll have a look at in a minute. And so next up here we have under the advanced tab we have this layering mode and we have a number of different options. We have rough coating, smooth coating and then we also have Fresnel blend as well. Now, if you want to know more about these, I suggest that you go and have a look at the documentation. And really, for most cases, I would leave this onto automatic. And the reason being is that when you set it to auto, it's basically the most physically accurate way because the layer node tracks the top roughness and it automatically selects the appropriate mode. So just leave this to auto and your materials forthgoing will always look as good as they can do. So now I've just demonstrated how you create a very simple plastic material. You've got the defuse and then we've got our dielectric. And so now let's just take a look at how top thickness works. Okay, so in this tab here, I've created this wood lacquer material. And this is very similar to the one that I used in the clear coat lesson for the Pixar surface. So if I just select my teapot here and I then right click and I assign materials to viewport selection, now what happens is that we've got our, our very great and our very boring wood material that has been assigned to our teapot. And let me just show you what's going on here. So I have two layers. I have this diffuse layer here, which I've got this wood texture, and I've actually desaturated it to show you how the top thickness works. And then over the top of my llama diffuse layer, I've got a llama dielectric, and actually I've named it colored lacquer. So you probably might already know where this is going. So if I just come back to the layer node, you can see here that our top mix is set to 1. And if I just take the roughness down on the dielectric, you can start to see that what we've got is this dielectric layer over the top of our wooden defuse. And it's not very, very exciting. And so let me show you how layer thickness works. And so if you've watched the clear coat lesson for the Pixar surface, you'll know that in the real world, some woods come without any color. And so the color that you see in the real world is actually from the colored lacquer that is painted over the top of the bare wood itself. And this is where this top thickness really comes into its own. And so let me show you the option within the dielectric. And under interior, I've set the absorption color to this dark red color. And so as I start to increase this top thickness value, what you'll start to see is the absorption color is now starting to be laid up on top of our llama defuse. And like I said, this is all driven by this absorption color. It's not driven by the reflection or transmission tint. It's driven by the absorption color. So if you want to create materials that have color varnishes to them, this is how you do it. You set your absorption color and then you then start to increase your top thickness. And by doing that, what you can start to see is we now start to get this really nice sort of deep red 
mahogany style kind of wood. And yes, I haven't put any bump maps or anything, and I haven't added any scratches to the dielectric over the top because I wanted to keep this quite simple. And so just to summarize this, we have our defuse layer here, if I show you that which is this very boring gray wood. And then over the top is we have this absorption dielectric, which looks like this. And then when I then layer those together with a top thickness value of say 0.6, this is what you start to get. And you can do that for a number of materials. And so let's have another look at something which is like a metal. So let me again select the teapot and select this llama surface here, which I'll apply. And again, if I just take off the top thickness, what you can see here is our base layer is this llama conductor. And I've applied some flakes, which you can see here, which gives it this kind of car paint material. And again, it's exactly the same. So we have our llama conductor metal base, which is plugged into our material base. And then over the top, again, we have this absorption color. And if, again, if I start to increase the top thickness, we now start to get this really interesting and quite stylistic looking metal. And so I hope that has been a very basic and solid intro into the llama layer. And of course, the way you would stack these layers is like you would do in the real world. You would start with your base material of your metal, then you could add a coating over the top, and then you could start to add some grime and some dust and some oil and smudgy fingerprints. And yeah, you can really start to create some complex layered materials. And in a forthcoming lesson, I'm going to break down a whole bunch of llama presets that I've already made. And I'm going to show you how I constructed each of the layers and how I layered them together.